So today I was writing some code that had to catch an error, but it was a special type of error called a Zod error thrown by the Zod package that does validations on data. So I was validating user input and when invalid it would throw a Zod error and I wanted to call a function on that Zod error called flatten. So I called it, TypeScript did not like this. It said um, basically flatten is, you can't call a flatten function on unknown. So me, the, the intelligent, smart developer that I am, I came up here and I said Zod error and I hit save hoping it would fix all my problems. It did not because catch is generic. It's going to catch any error that gets thrown up here in the try block. So I was back to square one and I had to basically figure out how can I know what type of error I'm catching. So what you actually do is you use an if statement. So you can say if E is an instance of Zod error, well, now TypeScript is smart enough to know, messed up, there we go, that E is now a Zod error, so you can call the flatten function. So why don't we try this out? I'm going to make a request to my API that will console log this error out and show me the, the validation errors. Um, why did I want to do that? Because I actually didn't just want to console.log, I actually wanted to return success of false and errors are e.flatten, like this which now displays these errors nicely to whoever called my API. So what do you do if it's a different type of error? So you can add an else if, and you could say something like, what if it is a type of string? So it's possible to, to throw a string, for example, throw, oops, like that. And if this is the case, we're just gonna console.log a string error and the E. So we're going to come back, call this again, and you can see that it just console.logged it here. So you can check if it's an instance of an error you're looking for, you can check using type of, but at some point you may just get to the bottom and you're like, I don't know how to deal with these errors anymore. I've dealt with the ones that I was expecting. These are now exceptions. They're, they weren't what I was able to recover from. So in this case, what I would do is actually just else rethrow the error to whoever called this function because maybe they're expecting and they know how to handle and recover from that type of error. So for example, if I were to change this to a new error, which is one we're not dealing with yet, send this, well, what does Next.js does? It just explodes with HTML. Not super useful, but it does return a 500 internal server error. So I guess that's okay. What you could do inside of Next.js in that case, you could come up here and you could write a try catch around this whole thing. And you could say if E is an instance of error, well, what we're gonna do is we're going to return a response of 500 and we'll have some JSON that says like, um, message catastrophe, just like that. Um, I would actually have to move this up inside of the try block. So now we could rerun this and we caught that error in the, in the caller function and it was able to recover and message out catastrophe. So just to, to rehash what we did is Inside of save data here, I was expecting to receive a type of error called Zod error that I knew how to deal with. If there was a string, I was just gonna console.log it. And if there was anything else, I was gonna throw it up because maybe the caller knows how to deal with this. Luckily, we are the caller. So we could write our own try catch, check if it's an instance of error and um, respond with a 500. So you'd still want to in this case, if it wasn't, um, handled by the if statement, say throw E again. So whoever called this can try to deal with it. But this is how you can go and inspect the type of errors you're being, uh, that are being caught so that you can try to recover from them in the appropriate way. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, bye.